Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys again for the Gig Rundown. I think that's the name we landed on. I'm joined by my delightful and dashing co-host, friends, and amigos, Perry Bean, John Bolger. How are you guys doing? Great. Couldn't be better. All right, let's dive right into it. John, you were out of the country for about a week. How'd that go? Oh, it's great. Great. I was in Mexico with my father. He's been going to the same place since 1978. He, he has a place there, right? Yeah, in 1978, my father, when I was in eighth grade, uh, we went down there and he and some buddies bought a condo for, I think, like $4,000 each. They put wow. in the money and he's been going there every year. So an actual property ownership, not a timeshare nightmare. Well, but the thing is, you can't officially own, oh. an American can't really own land on the beach in Mexico. It's a hundred year lease. Uh -huh. uh, uh, but uh, he's not too worried about that. Yeah, right. So <laughs> yeah. what do you do with your father who's of the age of... Well, how old is your dad? Uh, he is almost 88. Okay, yeah. so what does... Do you, Hachi Hachi. Your, what do you and your... Yeah, Hachi Juhachi. <laughs> how do you do, how do, what do you do with your father that's 88? Uh, you know, we hang out. We, uh, we go on the beach. We um, do a little yoga, do play a lot of gin. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Hey, out of curiosity, is your dad a, a guitarist? No. No, no he is okay. not. Although, my very first guitar, my mother bought one for him, but he had six kids and a job. And plenty and of time to play it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he never had a chance to play it. So, yeah. um, so my mom wanted him to play, ended up making me play. So, yeah. yeah so, thanks, Mom. Nice. Well, uh, as the gig, run, rig run, or the gig rundown indicates, we kind of talk about our job and then things loosely associated, as vacations do, yeah. happen on our jobs from time to time. Uh, Perry and I got to do, and then Jared behind camera got to do the Tool and Pantera rib rundowns that Huge. are out, rolling out there in the world right now. Those were fun for different reasons, but also similar reasons for me. Big bands in my youth, sure. as I still listen to them to this day. But uh, it was cool. Tool, Justin really got on the bass and kind of demonstrated everything he does with it, everything he does with his rig. He was very thorough. His tech, Pete Lewis, is great on camera. That was a fun day. Yeah. Oh, God. Spe you speaking of, of Pete and Justin, if I ever win the lottery, I'm just gonna hire English guys just to talk to me. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. love it. Like I could listen to them just tell me bedtime stories yeah. because they're so charming and like professional, but also like fun and yeah. I don't know. I just love their accent. What is it? Is it you say something along the line like we're speaking the same language or? or yeah, sometimes I feel like the... yeah, like with Scottish guys, we're both speaking English, but we are definitely separated by a common language. <laughs> you know, right. from time That's to time. That's kind of like yeah. when you did that interview with uh, Stone King. Like oh, you guys yeah. are both technically oh. speaking English, but that was you guys were hitting different wavelengths. Yeah, yeah. We, we might have ought to put some uh, captions on that one. <laughs> but that was a fun one, the Tool one. If you haven't checked that out, it's worth checking out, especially if you're a fan of Tool and Justin Chancellor. And the Pantera one that just went up this week was a big one for us. We've been chasing that one for a while as well, and uh, we got Rex and Zach involved. And uh, off camera, but still involved, was Grady, who was Don Bags Tech, and he told us some stuff. Which was cool about Zach's rig, if you hadn't seen it because you just out of the country, is that he incorporated some of Dime's key effects. Oh, yeah. like the doubler flanger, uh, flanger from MXR. Such a cool homage. The Aphex yeah. big bottom thing that, mm -hmm. that was a part of his thing. And then the Rocktron silencer, that was a big part of his sound. So that came in a rack along with Grady and his expertise, expertise of the rig. So that was cool that, you know, although he didn't use any Dime's guitars, any of his amps, because he's obviously got the wild audio stuff going. Yeah. He, he did bring a little bit of dime stash. Oh yeah, as a well, and and what a loving homage to. I, I, I imagine they had to know each other back in the day. Oh, right? they did. Oh, they were sure. big buddies. They yeah, were they were real close. Were together. Yeah. And that's when Zach Wild was a little more wild. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I yeah. Bet they got into it. They, yeah. I'm sure they had some tales. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. th those are both great rig rundowns, not only for myself, Perry, of that ilk, the, the heavy music sure. genres, but uh, also just for the company to get yeah. those two big names in the boat. So uh, do yourself a favor and check those out. And that was, I remember years ago, you had mentioned that was your, that was your white whale yeah. you were chasing. The, the dream. We've had those conversations off camera, but like what rig rundown would you wish could happen, either, even dead or alive? And mine was always Dimebag, not only because I have a tattoo of him on my leg, love Pantera, uh, but watching those vulgar videos was like hanging out with buddies growing up. Yeah. Oh, kind of yeah. taught me how to party or how not to party. You know, <laughs> it, it's their music was they, great to make bad decisions too. You know, if you grew up like us and in, into metal, you probably had a friend who had an older brother yeah. that was kind of a loser and <laughs> like smoked a lot of pot and had access to those videos. But that was like so almost like viral before the internet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like as soon as I heard about those, it's like, oh shit, we got to go to Steve's house and yeah. watch his old brother's 
VHSs of this because it's crazy. Well, that was kind of like our version of mixtapes in the 90s was was like CKY was another thing where right, I, right. I learned about a lot, a lot of music for those damn Margera and skateboard videos were, was like watching those things. Soundtracks to skate videos for yeah, sure. Yeah, it was like that's how I learned a lot about music and vulgar videos was in a way that, you know, back then even we were still on stage and that was kind of how you knew your rock stars, maybe Hit Parader, but we don't have their interviews that we had. We don't have the YouTube channels we had. And so we kind of mystified them. Right. And like being able to see them in vulgar videos hanging out backstage was like, they're like, they came, I mean, sadly for me as a loser, like they were my friends. Yeah, it almost like you got to see the real them. Yeah. You know? So all that to say was, I just bet he would have been a hoot on camera, let alone like him talking about his gear or whatever. I guarantee a dime bag would have been a character. It would have been so fun to try to wrangle him and just let, let the tape fly and yeah. see what happens. So that was Man. always my dream one in that regard was like, I knew it would be a hell of a good time. Sure. Before we go on to another topic, I just want to let the audience know, like, if you had told Chris or I when we were, yeah. you know, 12 years old that as adults we would be getting to interview bands like this, A, never would have believed you. Yeah. But, like, we are so grateful for you guys watching yeah. and being a part of this with us and, you know, seeing behind the curtain a little bit with us because... You know, I feel like it's where we all kind of meet, you know. Right. It, 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 it doesn't necessarily even have to be a specific band, but if you're really a music fan or, you know, a musician. But uh, getting back into the lane of gear, you guys put up two uh, demos recently. You did the PV Classic 20 and yes. the Bell Ray. Tell yes. me about your experiences with those amps. Okay. Um, Classic 20 I have a long history with. Um, there was a music store in my hometown, Hanson Music, which is still there. Uh, my buddies Bob and Art run it and they were a PV dealer. And I think your tone, at least when I was a kid, is kind of contingent on geography. Yeah, sure. You sound like what you can get. And back in Montana then, you could get PVs. And, uh, and so I really love that tone. It's a, to me, it's a very, and I, I lean more towards the clean. I don't really, you know, I mean, it's, it's, I'm, a, I'm I am a different generation. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, if, even if you listen to the early Van Halen stuff, it's not that dirty. We just right. didn't get that dirty and it really wasn't a thing. Um, and that, that PV tone to me really, it's kind of my wheelhouse. When I did, um, I did, several seasons of a, of a TV show, National Star for NBC, and we, and I was using two PV Classic 20s. Just cranked up and sounded great. And I think their, their, their new model is better than ever. I, I wish it was still made in Mississippi. That's yeah. just me. But I get it. The world is what it is. It's tough to hit that price point. I think it's right. nine hundred dollars, nine ninety nine. Yeah, exactly. It's it's an impossibility, and everything is so crazy expensive. I love that there's an affordable. I like the fact that a kid mowing lawns can buy an amp you can gig with. Yeah. Um, now, when you say that, back in the Nashville, when you moved to town, that a lot of the clubs downtown were backlined by PV stuff. No, no, no. But I brought. I, oh, okay. But I, I would carry mine, and the power is so terrible downtown that I, I blew up two of them downtown. Cause you'd, it, it's funny, I shot a TV show once um, for the, they had the, NA, the NFL draft. Okay. Uh, and, and they shot it at Tootsie's. And I brought down my, um, my attenuator and it told me what was coming out of the walls and it was coming out of the walls like 1.30. Wow. <laughs> so I'm like, that That's explains hot. it. Yeah, that'll that do That explains why it fried this That brown so, box you have. Yeah, the brown box totally, totally uh, puts it in the sweet spot. But, but that so nothing against PV, it fried because of of that's high voltage, as ACDC. scary wiring. Yeah, yeah. scary wiring. <laughs> what were you gonna say? I, I was gonna, you know, believe it or not, there there, there were time there was a time where if you went to Broadway, you'd see a lot more PVs than yeah. you would expect. You right. know what I mean? It's like uh, I think Tootsie's. Yeah, might have had a deal with them at one point, or Robert's Western World. I think PV was kind of supplying them. Yeah, and for there's, a they're they're still around. However, it's gone a lot more. There's so many solid state, very light alternatives uh, right, right. now. Yeah, I think yeah. it's more more of a player's choice now than it than it might have been back yeah. in the day. But yeah, for sure. I, I kind of and you know th this is where we can open up to the the viewers is that PV, especially back in its heyday in the '90s, and early 2000s. I would say it was the biggest amp company that catered to almost all genres. Because think about it, the 5150 is a huge metal 
Legendary. All the subgenre sure. right. metal amp, but then it also has the stuff with the clean acts. Yeah, country right. guys. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It, it, and, and whereas Marshall did its thing from like classic rock to hard rock to metal, but like PV Con, you could do it all, whether it was the 5150 or the classic stuff. Right, and pedal steel amps, yep. uh, yeah. bass amps, PAs. I mean, that's the thing. In my like in my hometown, your band went for the local music store like Music Villa in Bozeman or, okay. or Hanson's in Billings, and you could outfit your whole band right there. And you, you know, you didn't mail order stuff back then. Right. There was what? no Amazon or any of that stuff. So what did you think of the Bell Ray? That kind of had like three amps in oh, one, right? I thought that was so impressive because it, it th this is the car amplifier. Yeah. And, and um, as I say, I, I lean more towards clean sounds, but to, to my ear, I found every one of those settings a very distinct clearly european sound yeah vox high watt and marshall yeah, yeah and yeah. every one of them had a little bit of a, a grit and growl to it even on their clean settings they had a little warm fuzzy that i i i thought it was i thought it was beautiful i also thought it was pretty smart of car to take this approach because with modeling becoming mm. so close and you know you, you, Modelers obviously offer a player a multitude of sounds and amps and stuff. You know, if you're not into that and you are playing an analog amp, to have a couple of options is not a bad call. So I think, you know, hats off to Carr for, for making an amp with such distinct tonal possibilities, I think. Yeah, you know. yeah and, and they react, they all reacted differently. Huh. You know, there's different, there's, and I think that's the thing that modeling never quite gets. You get the sound, but you don't necessarily get the performance because it's not, reacting the same way as far as natural compression and and this kind of feedback and all these all these things that affect you on as a performer it's not audio it's more about what it brings out of you i think i can see that for sure well moving along on our list is that uh something for me and perry to ponder and then i'll open it up to the bigger thing is like i feel like there's so many reunions happening this oh, one specifically God. being the slayer they were gone for just five years. I thought, you know, we saw them on their farewell, farewell tour in Nashville here. So apparently they're coming back this year. A, is there a demand for them? I don't know. And then B, with all the reunions happening, is it losing its kind of luster of having a band come out of the, you know, the dust off the, the gear and come out? I, I'm of two minds about this because I love Slayer. Yeah. So more Slayer is obviously good. <laughs> right. and, but also you do see, especially like, Post pandemic, a lot of bands that were like playing farewell tours and kind of gussing it up, making a lot of money because it was their last tour. Yeah. And then just a couple years later coming back. And it's not just Slayer. I've seen it, you know, happen oh, quite a bit lately. So many bands. Yeah. And it's like, uh, if you're going to take a hiatus, just say that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think you necessarily have to be like, cash grab us. You know what I mean? Because if for fans, we're going to, we're going to spend the money anyway. You know yeah. what I mean? What about you? Do you have any uh, like thoughts on the whole reunion fad? Well, you know what makes bands play, you know, established bands? Money. Money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, you wave enough money in front of, you know, enough people. You know, there's this, that's the thing about this gig. You are your own retirement. You yeah. know, as long as, the reason they say players only love you when they're playing is the only way you're getting paid is if you're playing. And if you weren't the songwriter, uh, if you're in a band, you didn't write the songs. Yeah. If you're not gigging, you're not earning. Right. So even though you might be out with guys that you met when you were a child and you're very different by now and you're now you're grown men and you just can't stand those rednecks you're working with. Yeah. Uh, you know, eventually you, you need some dough. You think, no, not so bad. <laughs> Got to put dough on the <laughs> table. Yeah. No, I, I don't think it's as calculated. Maybe it is in some mm. cases where but I bet they get a phone call that is too hard to turn down. Yeah, 100%. You know, yeah. whether it's a promoter or a manager gets an offer from a festival looking for a big splash banner name to include on their right. festival three-day weekend. I think so you just hit the nail on the head because, you know, years ago, there might be a couple of big festivals. You Lollapalooza, know, Bonnaroo. And uh, Walking Open it. Air Festival. Now there are a ton of festivals like not only, you know, I mentioned it's not only Slayer, you know, I see like Have Heart doing a reunion. I see yeah. Bane playing reunion shows. Modern Life is War is coming out of retirement. And it's like, I mean, that's it, Furnace Fest. I'm so excited for that, you know. Yeah. But yeah, it's probably driven by festival promoters with a huge chunk of change. Trying to get somebody. Can, we want something that's crazy. Sell tickets. So let's do 
you know, some, some wild ass reunion mm -hmm. stuff. This is one that we joke about in a group text that we're all misfits. in. Yeah, the misfits, yeah. which we went out to the first one. We were loved it. A group of my buddies were all, you know, Perry included. I've gone to several of them, and, and it's we like, dropped some cash on that. And now we're like, we see him keep popping up. We're like, we joke about it, like, yeah, fuck that shit. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I guess I, I could sell a guitar and go again because I will because I love we the misfits. We just did that with <laughs> No Effects last yeah. year. We went to see No Effects in Florida, and they're still doing their never-ending tour. Yeah, their final tour is now in its second year. Yeah, <laughs> but needless to say, those shows were amazing. So yeah, well, play on, boys. Yeah, keep going. Go for it. Get it while it's Till getting, the wheels fall off, I guess. Good, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so we'll move on. I saw this happen, and this is exciting for uh, Nashvillians that maybe want to travel across the pond, is that Gibson Garage. Oh, the new London the, location. Right. Yeah. So they opened that up, and, and so they, the big splash they made, speaking of headlines, is that they got Jimmy Page to be involved, not only in the event, but he's going to have, you know, signature guitars coming out. And I want to throw it to you guys. I love what Gibson's doing. You know, I... I uh, I think they're 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 a great part of our community. I, I do think that that's going to be the most expensive guitar that people never play, yeah. really? because yeah. God, they're so they're so heavy, man. Yeah. I mean, they're so heavy, and they're cool. Plus, uh, like, how many more ways can you do a Les Paul at this point? Like, yeah, I been, guess that's true. You well, know, they've done, but you know, that to say, also, I think Gibson, you know, they charge a premium price. However, they're making art in a, in a sense you know like that stuff coming out of the murphy lab yeah, their the custom murphy shop stuff. it's like pretty phenomenal you know oh, yeah, you, yeah, you no, gotta admit that's great stuff so yeah i i have a i've got a lot of guitars but i've got a um <laughs> you i've got a i've got a 2019 uh les paul and and then i've got a a 52 a 54 a 56 and a 60 junior is that it is that all? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Don't you have the one with the bender in it? Because that's that's an older one. Yeah, but that's a but that's a that's a, like a newer, that's yeah. a '90s. Okay. So it doesn't really count. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. But my my point is, my old stuff, the 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 um, you know the the top shelf vintage guitar, you know these 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 Cubbins. gold tops. Yeah. I can honestly say my my 2019 man, if I. I love my old stuff, and that's what I play. But my my new guitar, in a blind taste test, if I put away the vibe and all my sentimentality, it's it is an equally great instrument. Huh. So, you know that th that being said, I, I I play my old stuff the most because because <laughs> that's you know I've, I've had that stuff forever. Cool it's kind of yeah. yeah, it's not even and and yeah, it just it's it's almost like the it's almost like the analog amps. Even though you don't hear it, you feel it on some level. And maybe we're getting in, into, in the, into the metaphysical right there. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's more spiritual. I don't know. Now yeah. going to uh, new gear, I saw uh, PRS is un, un, you know, unveiling a bunch of gear coming out. And one of the things I saw was a, basically their CE24 model, but in a satin finish. But I wanted to ask you, does a finish on a guitar matter to you when you're buying something new no not at all okay so not, it doesn't play into like not at all and and i love prs doing stuff like that okay for instance talking about old but also a 500 dollars guitar it's 499 right which yeah. is incredible okay so so on tour i had my i had my 58 junior which i no longer have i traded my buddy for this switchmaster 54 switchmaster but i had my 58 junior on tour and uh I looked at it one day and I saw all these dings that my my tech had put on it and I'm like, you know, I don't mind banging it up myself, but when when other guys are banging it up, I don't really you're like it very much. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm like, you know, <laughs> come on, man, because you know, because if he'd practiced a little bit more, he could have been in front instead of teching, but he didn't. <laughs> so uh, maybe this is sort of a thing. But anyway, all that to say, I thought, okay, I've got to leave this at home. So I, I brought out a my PRS SE1, which is just a junior. Yeah. And I'm telling you, man, the front of the house could not tell the difference. And at the time, this was like a $300 guitar. Yeah. So I replaced a $10,000 guitar with a $300 guitar. And it was great. It was... Did it, you think that up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, 
there is that one had the do beat out of it. Uh, <laughs> so yes, but I didn't care. Yeah. And 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 it just got better. The more hits, the better. What about you? Does does finish matter to you? Not especially. Although I do love a satin finish because I feel like the neck feels a little bit better to me. Oh yeah. You know, I love even if I have a. You know, a, a, a guitar with a big old glossed up neck. I'm gonna sand that bitch down anyway. So like, yeah, yeah yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it satin myself anyway. One thing, you know, electrics. I don't think it matters hugely, but I think there's something to for me satin finish um, acoustics that I think they just there's a little more presence. I, that could be me, but I think you know you put a heavy heavy lacquer on wood. That, oh yeah, the, the, the sound acoustic. is the wood moving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I do love like. Um, you know, the Lara V guitars that are satin finished? Yeah. Man, I think they just right out of the gate sound pretty phenomenal. Yeah, I think it matters more maybe on an acoustic, on acoustic than, sure. than an electric. Yeah. Uh, moving down, we're entering the Ed Sheeran block, which you probably didn't see coming. But apparently this morning, literally, uh, I think the Loudon got announced a few days ago, and it's officially out there for pre-sale or pre-order. But the Sharon Signature Looper, built by Headrush, just got announced this morning. Cool. Headrush? Yeah, so Headrush Super has been looper? doing some... <laughs> yeah, but it's, yeah. Like, it's like a looper first with some multi-effect stuff in it gotcha. but it, because like such a big part of his live set which right. he toured the world recently and played nissan by himself <sighs> I so know. i mean he needs a looper you know what i mean yeah. so like if you're yeah. gonna have a guy design a looper he might be the one yeah i'd say yeah. he's a good candidate yeah he sold yeah. out nissan and a looper and an ac uh, acoustic so head rush is obviously known for like kind of modeling stuff yeah. this isn't amps or anything it's just, just effects that, it says 159 uh, effects on top of what would be right. included for the looper the looper has six di or five different modes, multi, sync, song, band, and freeze. So I imagine that's just like create your own. Sure. It has drum loops and a big display, seven inch display, similar to their Head Rush Prime. To their pedal board thing. Yeah. I mean, so, for an acoustic guy, that tracks. Yeah, it's pretty wild to think that, because then the Loudon, that is his signature, is a $6,000 uh, acoustic, limited to 150 pieces. But yeah, the, the, the looper multi effects unit is $1,400. Hmm. So you, I feel like you get a lot more bang for your buck out of that yeah. multi-effects unit looper. Sure. I mean, it also saves you if you're playing, if you're like that guy and playing a bunch of fly dates, you don't want to bring a whole board, I guess, you know, if you I, are using effects. You know who I think it would be valuable for, and we did the rundown with him, is Mike Dawes. Oh, yeah, guy right. Tours with like Tommy Emanuel and sometimes. Yeah, he's, God, yeah. I love Mike. He's he such a cool dude. He builds loops and does great song renditions, but uh, he'd be a guy that I could see really get his hands oh, on it. Yeah, he's, he's brilliant. And his... In fact, if you've not seen his rig, his rig rundown, it is the most impressive acoustic rig I've ever seen. Everything he, he, he uh, it's a, it's a, it's a perfect marriage of, of gear and artistic expression. He's really great. Yeah. And amazing tones. Amazing, amazing tones. That's where like something like technology and gear enhances someone's ability yes. versus maybe clouding it or, or right right it's not a crutch enable, yeah right. it's not a crutch it's it's uh it's like you know it's an artist just putting more colors colors sure. on his palette and yeah. anytime an acoustic player is kind of broadening the horizons yeah i think it's awesome because you don't see a whole lot of innovation in the acoustic guitar really, world it's kind of been the same thing for so long outside sure. of builds sure well billy strings oh I mean, well billy yeah that's a different that's story altogether but, but yeah, yeah. Which yeah. he just sold out Bridgestone here in town, I think, two or three nights in a row. I think it was three nights, yeah. That's <sighs> unreal, man. It's wow. about just an acoustic guitar and selling out. Selling wow. out arenas, yeah. But uh, any interest in a, a, a super duper looper? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I love loopers. You're a loop guy. I, I love, I, I, yes. Um, I, uh, and you got a drum machine, so maybe this will be, you know, <laughs> yeah. replace all that. Yes, I, I, I love loopers. I'm, I'm not particularly good at them, but I, I do love them. I think they're, they're, they're a... Wonderful tool. Is yeah. it something you use to perform? Or is it something you use to like I, kind of work out the kinks and get uh, creative? I've used them to perform. Okay. You know, I've used them. Yeah, uh, I use them more as a writing tool. Yeah, like I, I find. Like, yeah, yeah. If I, you know, especially like if I am jamming and I come up with a riff that I know I'm gonna forget, I'll just go ahead and loop it, uh, um, and then I can figure out a lead over top of it or whatever that case, whatever the case is, or make some sort of recording of it if I'm not already rolling. So right. Kind of something like humming a melody into a phone kind of yeah yeah because yeah. you know that that's that's also a trick you know like uh when you're recording something like a riff like oh this is cool you come back to it six months later and you're like, how the fuck did i play that <laughs> yeah. like, right? i don't even remember what key you were in what guitar it was like i'm like how did i yeah yeah so but yeah loopers are handy loopers are are, are, are a little bit of a trick because everyone is different yes you know what i mean 
um, KT Tungstall rundown oh, where she was yeah. using the old boomerang. She was even mentioning like this, like the boomerang specifically, where it, where you have to, you have to almost learn where to hit the loop. Right. Because they're all a little bit different and there's a tiny she, bit of latency. From she learned that language and so she's sticking with it. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Because yeah. who would want to relearn it? Right. You know, I mean, and, and she's such a brilliant player and does it so well. It's, you know. That comfort allows her to be more freeing in her yeah. Right. You know how much confidence she would lose, though, if you last minute Ooh. threw her a different looper? She'd be like, oh, shit. Oh, I mean, because like, people that use loopers, they're so tied to their looper. You well, know? it's the same thing with Dave Knutson and, and those DL4s. So yeah. He admits in the rundown there's far superior sure. delay options, but he's so into it. The DL4 is so intuitive to yeah. him at this point that he uses those. It's funny. I find myself even like today because the DL4 is one of the first pedals I got when I was a kid. So when I am looping, I almost always like subconsciously limit myself to like 16 seconds or whatever that thing did, which is wild. There's a new version of it now that's a much smaller form factor. And I think the looping capability is way, way better. I think it's like, you know, over a minute or something like that. So I probably need to get one and play with it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, moving into new music, again, we kind of got a, a, a deluge of announcements really sure, recent yeah. to add it in, as, so might not be as prepared, but St. Vincent just released a new song this morning and announced an album coming out on, I want to say, April 26th, Mom's Birthday. Good job, Kepi. Hey, Kepi. Uh, Born Screaming is the album title, and the song that came out was Broken Man. It it's kind of reminds me of how you described Marcus King's latest single, where it's like slow, brooding, minimal instrument instrumentation. But it, where it differs from that is about halfway through the song, it takes off. And then, you know, oh, Annie Clark gets that. her uh, music man guitar and, and makes uh, pyrotechnics with it. <laughs> so it's cool. It, it kind of starts as a sleeper and ends up as a, a rager. Yeah. So that uh, definitely check out that song for everyone that hasn't yet. Uh, I love those kind of songs. It's super dynamic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It comes out kind of like a crawler. Yeah. And by the end of it, you're sprinting. Like Phil Collins did that for me. Yeah. Yeah. Coming, yeah. But I'm excited to see where she takes her music because every yeah. time... It, she almost reinvents herself through the guitar uh, on her albums. Like I love the, w there's earlier work that I didn't connect with, but that last record, uh, was it called? Daddy's Home, that record, I actually liked a yeah. lot. I you got to the point where I listened so much on Spotify, I felt guilty and I bought it on vinyl. Yeah. <laughs> it's, only, it's the only record hers I have. It's uh. not like someone I go through the whole catalog with and buy, like yeah. religiously, like a Jason Isbell. Like she was that record connected, I bought it. Boy, that AT&T outage the other day, made yeah. me really second guess my appreciate like you know reconsider my appreciation for physical media yeah you know what i mean it's like if i love a record i'm gonna spend the money and buy it because what if the satellite just quit working or at&t went down for an afternoon you can't listen to music you yeah know? like so that's kind of scary yeah right you know? uh i uh, try not to go there yeah just uh but, ignorance is bliss yeah 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 uh, another one that you brought up, Perry, was Pelican, which is Ooh. cool because they haven't come out with new music in five years. It's been a while, yeah. And uh, this is the first time they've made new music with uh, their original guitarist since 2012. Laurent, I want to say, is how you pronounce his first name. But he left the band, so that, uh, and then Dallas Thomas, who was a, a Nashville guy, had been playing him for, and he joined, rejoined the band however long ago, and now they're finally coming out with new music with the original guitar player. This EP, I think it actually comes out tomorrow. Yeah, uh, yeah, actually tomorrow, Friday. Yeah, yeah. Which is exciting because they're one of my favorite post-rock bands. Uh, I, I love Pelican. Their last full full-length album was uh, with Dallas. It's called Forever Becoming. That record's really good. It's a front-to-backer. Yeah. I like to call. Dallas came from, you know, he lived here for a long time. And he came from a band called Ass Chapel, which <laughs> <Yeah>. was incredible, <laughs> legendary Nashville metal band, you know, heavy band. So there's that. So um, well, definitely check that out. Yeah. So the new Pelican. Um, Lost Dog Street Band has a new video out tomorrow, which I'm pr really excited about because I know that they have a, a record coming out soon. Um, also, Knock Loose has a record coming out, I think, on the 10th. Okay, and they just yeah. released a, a single with a video. Good God damn it, it's heavy. Oh, it's fucking heavy. I love it. Oh, I love it. And like most of their tour, including the national date on May 1st, which will either get a rig rundown or drum rundown or both is sold out like most of their tour oh. coming up is sold out it's well we did a rig rundown with not loose at a venue here in nashville called the end um if you've ever had the the pleasure of going to the end or playing the end it's maybe like 100 capacity i mean yeah. it's like a tiny tiny, tiny sticky floor gross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and yeah. they just about ripped the fucking roof off of that place then but now they're playing like big old marathon like, yeah is, it's I huge imagine it's over a thousand because it's oh general yeah 1500 probably yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's it's wild to see the trajectory of that band from just a couple of years ago. We shoot the rig rundown in a tiny room, and now they're selling out. You know. Yeah, the end is a dump. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah oh, for sure. It's an armpit. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Nothing against dumps. Played no. there more times than I've seen my own dad. Yeah. Sorry, Bruce. Yeah, Bruce. Definitely need a tetanus shot either coming in. Yeah, oh, yeah. You almost need a hazmat suit to take a key in there. All I could get your opinion on this is that Drew Folk, who I'm not aware of, also goes by Wizard Blue or W Z R D B L D is his, you know, studio name. Uh, yeah, I think that's how you pronounce yeah, yeah. it. But he's worked with Motionless and White, who's mm -hmm. featured on the new LP from Knock Loose. Oh yeah. Papa Roach, Disturbed, A Day to Remember, Lil Wayne, and Ice Nine Kills. Does that scare you as a Knock Loose fan, or are you encouraged by what could be new? Ooh, you that's know, a lot of uh, mall mall metal there. You can't make the same record for your whole career. Oh, hey, Slayer. unless, unless, unless you're you are Bad Religion, <laughs> unless you were Slayer, or Bruce Springsteen, or ACDC, or, AC, yeah. or ACDC. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I'll give you that one. But yeah, you know, they, they got to try some new stuff. I think. I mean, they've already proven that they've they can make some asses move. So let's yeah. see what else. I mean, you know, they're already what I consider, you know, as far as heavy music, pretty fucking dynamic, yeah. considering. But yeah, I don't know. I I, I embrace. The, so you're the, encouraged by it rather than a little apprehensive. I might have been apprehensive if I hadn't heard the new track, Ooh, which okay. is freaking awesome. So I'll they're doing something right. I'll let them keep doing it. You know. Clear the pit. Here comes the Jinkos. All right, we're gonna end on this note, fellas. This is. Uh, I want to know where these stories are going to go, so I can't wait to throw it up to you guys. So there's a recent band, I think, if I pronounce it right, is Lorona. I think so. I think so. Nashville, like Corona, well, Murfreesboro but with band. L. Yeah. Oh, so it's actually in Tennessee. Oh, they're a Murfreesboro band. Wow. So this so, is a wild ass story. I'll let you take it over, but I want to get you guys to have your personal stories uh, about any bandmates that were horrible. So you, go, <laughs> you tell the story. So in this particular instance, I, I'm not going to name any names because who knows what's going to come of this? I would imagine some sort of legal recourse. I mean, the names are on the internet because yeah, they I mean, took screenshots, but go. For and it. obviously, this shit is everywhere. It's been posted and reshared all over the place. But apparently, John, this uh, kid, the singer of this band, became very, very obsessed with his guitar player's girlfriend or something. So, I guess the guy worked at a gym and had access to pre-workout. So, so he kept giving his buddy pre-workout, but was adding estrogen to the shit to try to get kind of take the manhood away from this guy and swoop in and steal his girlfriend, which is the most unhinged, crazy shit I've ever heard of. Wow. It, it is insane, but unfortunately for this poor guitar player, he was having all these medical issues from it and like dropping weight and having mental things because he's being, God knows how much fucking estrogen was being pumped into this. Like he's probably working out harder in his life. He's like, man, I keep getting like yeah. losing muscle mass. Like what's going I'm, on? I'm I can't stop crying. Yeah, yeah. and I'm very, very <laughs> emotional about yeah. the new Bridgerton. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but that is wild. If, yeah, I mean, wow. if, if that was my bandmate, obviously he would no longer be my bandmate, but I'd probably be pressing some charges. I mean, that thing on Amazon, which we both liked, uh, The Six, I think it was called, that, that fake band that they, they had like a oh, series yeah. around. Loved there it. was some, you know, turmoil in that band, <laughs> sure. which was fake drama, but uh, this is one for the books, that story. That one takes a cake. Yeah. Now, that's anybody that's life. played in a band realizes that when you're in a band of four or five people, that is like having four or five girlfriends. Sometimes, yeah. you know what I mean? There, it, it, it can get hairy on tour, but I've never, this is okay, by so far want, the worst thing I've let's ever Let's open it up. What's the worst bandmate story you've personally endured? Well, um, that you're willing to share. Okay, mm -hmm. well, well, first of all, I, I feel like I, I never, I make it a personal rule to never say anything bad about you anybody because I know I've got I my stuff. You. Sure. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but I love that about you. I love you guys. Uh, because I, I feel like, you know, I've got, I've got my stuff, and everybody has their stuff. But I do have a great story. Okay. Um, a friend of mine, who's also a friend of, of Perry's, uh, uh, John Small, he's a, he was a, uh, film, we knew him as a film producer. But Worked for prior, for years. Yeah. Prior to being uh, a, pro, a film producer, he was a great drummer in New York, and he and Billy Joel played in bands together before Billy Joel's Billy Joel. And then they were, in a, they were in a band called The Hassles that was, I think, on Columbia. And then he and Billy Joe were in a duo called Attila. It was just drums and Billy on B3. Okay. And then when Billy became Billy, he played drums with them for quite a while. And eventually John had a, was in a motorcycle accident and became Billy's tour manager instead of drummer. Well, Billy ended up 
uh, fallen in love with John's wife, oh. and uh, and John's wife divorced John, and I think married Billy, and they were together for a long time. I said, "Well, man, how'd that go?" He said, "You know, we were hippies. We didn't yeah. you know. <laughs> it, I mean, it stung a little bit, but we all loved each other, and it worked out." <laughs> I thought, boy, that is a next level maturity. Yeah, maturity. That's some George yeah. Harrison energy. That is some George Harrison energy. So <laughs> it's a, it's amazing that Fleetwood Mac his energy. his yeah, yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> Although they kind of hated each yeah, other, but yeah, but they couldn't even say it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah George they, wrote a song about it and got over it. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. But I I I, I always kind of marvel that you could have somebody have your friend, your lifelong friend, end up with your wife when you're still married to her. And everybody kind of like, que sera. So, uh, you know, yeah. that's that's the closest I got to something I- What about I, you? I know you've toured, you've toured like in, in small and big capacities, but you've, a lot of your tours were vans. Oh yeah, you know I've I mean? done so a lot like of vans. So like that's real done, cramped yeah. quarters yeah. for big personalities. So let me start by saying anyone I've ever played in a van with, I genuinely love and, and appreciate. But I did, we, uh, one of my vans had a fill-in bass player one time. And this fucking guy, oh my God. <laughs> had nothing to do with his playing or anything. It was his driving. Oh. Oh my God. He would, we got a van and a trailer and it's fucking loaded, which is hard enough to drive as it is. And this dude would be like trying to steer with his knee, looking at his phone to the point where we like had to stop him several times and pull over and be like, no, f get in the fucking back, dude. You, yeah. mm -hmm. Like you I'm not, I'm narcoleptic. So I'm not the first guy you want driving this fucking van in the first place, but it was <laughs> still safer, still safer than this kid. He was just not paying attention in any way, shape or form. And then he got really butt hurt when we called him out about it. So, you know, we, the day we got home from tour, it's like, okay, you're gone, dude. Like, especially because yeah. it's a fill-in. Yeah, because it's a thing. Like when you're on tour with somebody, especially in close quarters, it's not just about how you click as a musician. It's how you click as people, man. You got to eat with these people, oh. sleep, you know, in the, the hang same. Is, the hang is more than half of it. The hang is more than half of it. Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing that a lot of people, you know, if you're young and just getting started or just about to play your first tour, be cool. Yeah, be Don't nice. Be to, a dick. Yeah, yeah, be nice. That's it. Be be kind. Treat people like you want to be treated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, I'm a terrible driver. These yeah. guys hate my driving. <laughs> it works out because you hear yeah. the music. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, speaking of the hang, it's always great to hang with you yeah. guys, and I think that's part of the magic we we semi somehow put together on camera is a. Uh, <laughs> getting to hang and talk yeah. shit sure so uh, thank you guys and uh thanks for your support and uh, i think we're actually starting to strip the audio and put it up on a podcast so if you can't stand us on youtube listen to your favorite podcast yeah. streaming and don't stand us or can't stand us there either till next time fellas yeah. i'll see you again later later <laughs>